In this video, I'm going to look at in Excel fitting data to a logistic growth model. I'm going to try to sort of fit that uh, form. Um, I'm not going to match, say, for instance, what a Texas Instrument calculator does. It'll, it'll be close, but it won't be the same. But at least it's an algorithm. Okay. So first of all, just some uh, different notations. So here's the logistic function in uh, Wikipedia. And it has a an L over a one plus exponential minus K X minus X zero. So in this case, then L is uh, what the function goes up to. So if X becomes much larger than X zero, then this exponential part decays and we're left with L. So the long-term behavior uh, will be if the K is positive, if it's growing, then it will saturate at this L value. Um, if, if we're at a very uh, negative X, then this exponential part uh, grows, it's in the denominator. So then uh, it, the whole overall thing becomes very small. So we start off at zero and then it's, a, so we get this sort of S shaped or sigmoid shape. Okay. So that's the basic idea. So um, in this version of the form, L is what it saturates to. Uh, K is somehow this uh, related to this rate. And in this version, uh, the X zero is where it goes through half of its height. So I'm going to take advantage of that in sort of what I'm going to do. Because you can see that if x equals x zero, we have e to the minus k times zero, and that is one. So we have l on two. So this is sort of x zero is sort of the halfway point in this way of uh, playing around with it. Um, there are other versions. So that is this. I'm calling it the north. Uh, sorry, that's the Wikipedia version here with the x and the x zero. Um, here's the formula. I'm, the data I'm going to take is from a calculus concepts book, and this is pretty much the same form that you'll get out of a Texas instrument, except they'll call the LC. And it's this is the same form also over here in this, um, I'm just calling it the Northwestern, because that's where it's from, the Northwestern EDU site. Um, and they're using that same form. So then instead of this, x zero, they're putting a coefficient to the exponential. And just for comparison's sake, um, what Northwestern calls capital K, the other ones are calling L, and the TI calls C. Um, what the calculus concept called B, uh, Wikipedia and Northwestern called little k, and then uh, Wikipedia way with this x zero, uh, we can see that the a is, if I multiply this out, it is this minus and this minus give me a plus. So the a is really just the exponential of k x zero. Okay. So here's the data. I took it from the fifth edition of Latour et al sort of a business calculus book, and they were looking at uh, the availability of broadband since the year 2000. So this is the year since 2000, and this is the percentage of broadband. And just as a plot, here is the data. You can sort of see it starting off slow, picking up a little speed, and then saturating. It's got to saturate at 100 because it's a percentage. Okay, and now we want to find the parameters and um, if Excel uh, fits this form, I'm not aware of it. So I want some method that I can use within Excel to uh, fit this data. So now I'm going to go over to the Northwestern version. And this is also in the Wikipedia. 
and probably in the Torah book somewhere along the way. But uh, this mathematical form can be related to a differential equation. So without this term in the parentheses, this is the exponential growth you sort of see at the beginning. And then this uh, other part is what sort of the minus P on K part is what sort of saturates it, sort of, uh, uh, puts a limit on it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is try to uh, turn this differential equation into something kind of linear, then I can sort of do a linear regression in of my data in, in Excel. Okay, so that's my game next. So here is the formula I just called what they called P, I called it Y, I'm used to Y and X. And so again, that's just, and they're calling it, they're calling it time, I called it X, because it just using what's on my x-axis and what they called p, I called y. And then there is, uh, I called it uh, little k and I probably called it l. So I just translated their differential equation more into the language I'm used to. Um, and then I divided both sides by the, the y data. So now I have something, something, that goes as k to the minus k on l y. So this side, I've constructed something that's linear in y. So I'm going to make, I'm going to construct this ver this quantity, and then plot it versus uh, y, and fit that data. And then from the the slope and the intercept, I can pull out my k and my l. And in the models, K, um, the the other parameter is sort of roughly in, in sort of differential equation language, uh, like an initial condition. I'm actually going to use uh, sort of, I'm going to exploit that Wikipedia version and work with this sort of halfway point instead. But you need sort of some particular data point. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to take a derivative of y with respect to x and divide it by y and then sort of make a, a linear fit of that versus y. Okay, so let's do that. So dy dt is sort of basically a derivative or a, a slope. And so and it, it slope is a change in y over change in x. So I tried to make it somewhat symmetric. So here in row six, I took the uh, B7, the Y at, at row seven minus the row at Y5. And that was my the difference I used. And then I divided it by this corresponding time. So that was a, a dy dp. And then I sort of copied that formula down. And then over here, I divided. So that was a sort of derivative using sort of row seven and five centered at six, and then I divided it over here by the y at six. And there are probably some better smoothing versions, and maybe that's what uh, the TI calculator actually does, but this is just, I wanted something, some way to come up with parameters. This was the sort of a simple thing that I came up with. Okay, so this is that this quantity and now I'm going to plot it versus y and that's what I have here. So here is that dy over dy dx divided by y versus y. That's this plot. Here's my y, my x's, and here is that, that quantity and I made up based on the differential equation and I fit it uh, to a straight line in Excel and found the slope and intercept. Okay. So now I'm just using the Excel formulas. Here's the formula for the slope. And I actually found the, the negative slope because in this model, the, it's, the slope comes in with a minus sign. So I wanted to get K on L isolated. So when I calculated the slope using the Excel formula, I found the negative slope. Here was the intercept. 
and the intercept is the, the K, that sort of uh, growth factor. Um, and then the I could get the L from this was the K and this this involved the K and the L. So then I could uh, extract the L. So here was the L and close to 100, saturating at 100%. So that makes some sense. Okay. So now I have uh, from this uh, linear regression of this quantity versus Y, I have two of the parameters in the logistic model. And now I need the last one. And I'm going to use the sort of Wikipedia version. And I'm going to go after this sort of, I argue that this is the sort of half height. So what is the position of the half height? So here's, so I just said, oh, here's, here's my, what I'm saturating to. So I divided it into got the half height about 50%. Um, and I could have just used 50%, but I used uh, what I got out of the model. And then I just found the points uh, three and four where I was passing through there. And I'm just going to do a little interpret interpolation. So I found if I'm just using point, uh, the, the three, four points, I found uh, an intercept and a slope. It's only two points, so it's exact, but um, so I didn't really need these fancy formulas, but they were there, so I used them. Um, and then I solved for, just solved that little linear equation. I had an intercept and a slope. I solved that little linear, linear equation for this half height and came up with a position. So it's uh, about 3.7 uh, is where I'm at the half height. Let's go back over here. It's about 3.7 is about half the height. Seems to be about right. And uh, if I wanted the, the version that uh, the Northwestern version or the calculus concept book version or the TI calculator version, then their their parameter is a, which is the exponential of the k times that uh, that position. So in terms, so the a, the a in the other models is just the exponential of the k times the x zero. All right, so that is a method that produces. Uh, the three, the three parameters. And then here I am now just uh, testing it. So I take, here's my original data. And then I added sort of my fit. And we see then it's a fairly reasonable fit to the data. The blue was the data, the orange was the fit. A little off here or there, but for the most part, a decent fit. And this is again, just an algorithm. It's not the algorithm that the text um, TI calculators give uh, a slightly different result. So the the parameters uh, listed in the in, in the calculus concepts book, um, the L was one hundred two, the K was point five two nine, and the A was seven. 0.464, so not the same. So I'm not, this is not the algorithm used uh, by the Texas Instrument Calculator, but it's um, an algorithm and, and gave a reasonable result for this set of data. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.